Hi dears, welcome you all to the learning platform of Mohasin's Nursing Lecture. Nucleus is the information center of the cell and it is surrounded by the nuclear membrane. It is separated from the cytoplasm by the nuclear envelope. It houses the double standard helical structure deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA molecules that contain genetic information which is necessary for the cell to retain its unique character for its division and growth. The presence of nucleus differentiates the multicellular eukaryote from the unicellular prokaryote. The prokaryotes do not contain nucleus. So, the DNA is maintained in the same compartment as the other cellular components. So, in this video, we will discuss regarding the nucleus and in the last video, we have discussed regarding the difference between the prokaryotes and eukaryotes and have a brief description regarding the structure of the cell. If you didn't see my video, my previous video, I have given the link in the description box. You can go there and have a look on it. So we can start the topic. Let's have a discussion on nucleus. First, we can define the nucleus. What is nucleus? The nucleus is a membrane bound organelle that contains genetic material or DNA of eukaryotic organisms. As such, it serves to maintain the integrity of the cell by facilitating transcription and replication process. It is the largest organelle inside the cell taking up about a tenth of the entire cell volume. This makes it one of the easiest organelles to identify under the microscope. Next we can see the structural organization of the nucleus. In general, the nucleus has a spherical shape. However, it may appear flattened, ellipsoidal or irregular depending on the type of cell. For instance, the nucleus of columnar epithelial cells, what we can see here, appears more elongated compared to those of other cells. The shape of a nucleus, however, may also change as the cell matures. Next, we can see how the, how the DNA has packaged inside the nucleus. The nucleus of the average human cell is only 6 micrometers in diameter. Yet, it contains about 1.8 meters of DNA. This is distributed among 46 chromosomes each consisting of a single DNA molecule about 40 millimeter or 1.5 inches long. not simply crammed or wound into the nucleus like a ball of string. Rather, it is organized by molecular interaction with specific nuclear proteins into a precisely packaged structure. This combination of DNA with the proteins creates a dense compact fiber called chromatin. A DNA molecule would be a thin string with 2 mm thickness and the average chromosome would contain 40 km or 25 miles of DNA. With the damage of only 6 meters, the nucleus would contain 1800 kilometers of DNA. Next we will see the main components of the nucleus. 
first one that is the nuclear envelope the nuclear envelope consists of two lipid bilayer membranes first one the outer nuclear membrane second one and the inner nuclear membrane the space between these two membranes is called perinuclear space and it is usually about 20 to 40 nanometer wide why the lipid bilayers are separated by a thin space between them studies have shown them to be fused at the pores this double layered structure consists of phospholipids on the nuclear envelope nuclear pores are present which is made up of proteins through which substances enter or leave the cell for example rna proteins etc the nuclear membrane pores are occupied by dense granules or fibrillar material arranged in a cylindrical manner the nuclear envelope is one of the aspects that distinguish eukaryotic cells from prokaryotic cells another important part of nuclear envelope is called as fibrous lamina it is a part of nuclear cytoskeleton that is attached to the inner layer of the nuclear membrane it consists of fine protein filaments and serves to provide mechanical reinforcement to the bilayer membrane some of the other functions of the nuclear lamina include it can play a role in regulating the gene expression serves as anchor sites for the pore complexes of the nuclear then it regulates the material entering and exiting the cell The nuclear membrane is connected to the endoplasmic reticulum in a manner that creates continuity between the nucleus and external environment. That we can see here, there is a connection between the nuclear envelope and endoplasmic reticulum, which is going to maintain the connection between the external environment and the nucleus. Another important component of the cell is called as nucleoplasm. It is a substance of a cell nucleus, especially that not forming part of a nucleolus. Nucleoplasm is a type of protoplasm composed of small lipid content, enzymes, dissolved salts and several organic molecules such as phosphorus, potassium, sodium, calcium and magnesium. In addition, the nucleoplasm helps cushion and thus protect the nucleolus and chromosomes while also helping maintain the general shape of the nucleus. Next one, the third component and one of the core components of the nucleus which is called as nucleolus. It is a small dense spherical structure in the nucleus of a cell during interface. It is the most prominent structure of the nucleus. Unlike the nucleus, however, this dense structure lacks its own membrane. During cell division mitosis, the nucleolus breaks up only to reform from specific sections of the chromosomes after mitosis. Although the nucleolus is the most prominent structures of the nucleus. Its size is largely dependent on the level of ribosome production as well as the different types of molecular processes that occur in the nucleus. The strands of chromatin that hold the codes for ribosomal RNA are associated with this nuclear region and the information carried by these regions of DNA is enzymatically copied into RNA molecules. This RNA and small packages of protein are then combined 
and exported from the nucleus into the cytoplasm. This nucleolus is a site of transcription and processing of the ribosomal gene. In some organisms, the nucleus contains as many as four nucleoli. Next important part of nucleus is chromosomes. Chromosomes are thread-like structures made up of strands of DNA and the histone proteins. The main parts of the chromosome include kinetochores, which is a complex of proteins associated with the centromere of a chromosome during cell division, to which the microtubules of the spindle attach. Second one, which is called as telomeres. It is a compound structure at the end of chromosomes. Third one, which is called as chromatids, each of which consists of a P and Q arm. Each of the two thread like strands into which a chromosome divides longitudinally during cell division. Each contains a double helix of DNA. Chromosomes in the nucleus are tightly packed, which makes it possible for very large amounts of genetic material to be contained in a small space that is about 3 billion pairs are contained in each cell. So previous we have also seen that in the structural organization of the DNA we have seen how the chromosomes how properly packed and DNA is properly packed inside the uh, nucleus. Next, we will see the chemical composition of the nucleus. In the 9 to 12 percent consist of DNA and 15 percent histone, 65 percent enzymes, neutral proteins and acid proteins, then 5 percentage of RNA, 3 percent of lipids. Now we can summarize the functions. We have already seen the components of the nucleus and we have also discussed regarding what functions they have. So when we are summarizing that, we can tell that nucleus have very important role in the protein synthesis, cell division and differentiation, control the synthesis of the enzymes involved in the cellular metabolism, then controlling hereditary traits of the organism, store DNA strands, proteins and RNA, site of RNA transcription, example mRNA required for the protein synthesis. The family is the nucleus of the civilization. This is the wordings of very famous American writer, historian and philosopher, Mr. Will James Durant. This course indicates the importance of nucleus in the cellular functioning as the family is important for the development of the civilization. I hope you all understood my video. We will explore more information regarding the cells in the coming videos. Till then, goodbye. Be safe. Thank you all.